सर्वे भ्यो नम स्मॉल अनाउंसमेंट एट द आउटसेट स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम टुमारो वी विल हैव एडवोकेट कश्यप नायक टॉक टू अस अबाउट द टॉपिक ऑफ ग्रेट इंपॉर्टेंस टुडे रिलीजन एंड लॉ इन इंडिया ए वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर दोज टॉक्स एज वेल फ्रॉम द पास थ्री डेज वी हैव हैड द प्लेजर ऑफ हियरिंग हरि रवि कुमार स्पीक ऑन डी वी जी ज्ञापक चित्रशाले now the topic and the speaker sometimes they come together so well that uh, it strikes us that uh, they are made for each other and so is the case with the present set of talks and the speaker hari ravi kumar hari is a good friend and uh, as far as i know him he is a people's person he likes to hang out with people and uh, stay with them through thick and thin we will solve their problems help offer help in whatever way possible and also go on trips with them share their moments of joy and happiness and things like that so it was only natural that he was drawn to this uh, present series of multi volume reminiscences of dr dv gundappa and uh, that came through very well in his exposition on the gnyapaka chitrashale throughout these talks he has given us a good perspective on what kind of literature that uh, the art gallery of memories really is because it is unique not just to kannada but also to all literature like i said uh, in the introduction the other day and uh, hari has spoken about all the characters so well with so much warmth and affection the way he segued from one episode to another without any hassle whatsoever so seamlessly it was a pleasure to listen to him and uh, he has also drawn our attention to various aspects of gnyapaka chitrashale that uh, that can be missed by many other people for instance it is very easy to think of these uh, episodes these essays as you know an escape from reality we have lost something remarkable it is in a, it is uh, a, it it celebrates some a bygone era and things like that but hari has taken a healthy stance in saying that whatever values that dvg has cherished can be enlivened by us as well we can take uh, good lessons from the gnyapaka chitrashale and make our own lives more valuable more happy and enriching not just for us but also for the people around us i think nothing better can be done about gnyapaka chitrashale and we thank hari ravi kumar for this engaging entertaining absorbing and enlightening set of discourses so on behalf of all our audiences who are present here and also all the friends of us who are listening online i extend a very hearty thanks to hari ravi kumar I request him to please accept a small token of our respect and gratitude and begin today's proceedings thank you thank you shashi for your very kind words and uh, heartfelt thanks to gokhale institute for inviting me to speak on uh, inyapur chitrashale uh, yesterday after the uh, presentation uh, dr ganesh called me and we were speaking about some of the episodes in the second volume and uh, he said uh, he, he brought my uh, attention to some of the things that um, um, i didn't mention yesterday there are so many exciting episodes Uh, that some of them because of the paucity of time have gone forward and then uh, this morning again i went through the second volume i said okay maybe you have missed out something i should uh, not let it go before i move to the third volume so there are some things <coughs> uh, from what i spoke yesterday which i'd like to bring your awareness to <coughs> um speaking about the art of dance and how there was the anti notch movement um Uh, dvg uh, brings the attention of the reader to something very interesting he says when when talking about basically what they said was that uh, the devadasi paddhati which was there is giving uh, impetus to some sort of lewd activities in the temple this was the accusation so uh, dvg says nobody will find fault with the intention of discouraging prostitution as a profession but one cannot agree that the art of dance is the factor that causes or encourages prostitution we may suppress the art but can all the other reasons for prostitution also be suppressed 
in commercial advertisements in the newspapers today and he is talking about you know 50 years back he says in commercial advertisements in the newspaper today how many attractive images of the female form and the display of body appear and what are the kind of movies that are being made and how many newspapers exist which are dedicated exclusively to cosmetics and this kind of things and how many beauty contests are being organized how many occasions we see important ministers and judges who go to these competitions as uh, you know chief guests or adjudicators so are they not supporting uh, the uh, uh, objectification of women and he says this being the case saying that bharatanatya encourages prostitution is like saying a grape proved to be too big for an elephant's throat and he talks about one of the uh, pioneers of the movement who tried to uh, 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 bring awareness about the problems in the tradition judge chandravarkar he also wrote a very entertaining account of one of the courtesans named uh, tara nayaki in bombay apparently at that time there was even a road named after tara nayaki who was a courtesan so chandravarkar who was against this uh, tradition also had the um, um, perception to look at the life of a courtesan and record it so one of the traits we see all through these uh, uh, the the people of the time which are recorded in all these volumes is that one may disagree with another person we may have a disagreement either in terms of religion or politics or a particular philosophical stance but that never came in the way of personal relations so for example when uh, bangalore nagaratnama wanted to set up a chatra for people coming from uh, karnataka who are visiting tiruvayar she wanted to raise some funds at that point of time dvg spoke to the then divan uh, ramaswami mudaliyar now ramaswami mudaliyar was in a sense a political opponent of dvg he had a different stance from what dvg had but in spite of that ramaswami mudaliyar gave money to nagaratnamma he invited her to sing in the um, uh, in the mudaliyar sangha he also arranged for a concert in the puttana chetti town hall so although there were political rivals when it came to personal help it was uh, totally different we see this in so many instances so it's uh, uh, i feel sometimes today there there seem to be a breaking up of friendships because of a different political stance or because of some different uh, uh, take on economic policy or uh, uh, philosophical ideas so this is a totally different thing and personal relationships is totally different and we need not uh, ask I mean make that come in the way of our uh, friendships and in another uh, place in the uh, second volume when uh, speaking about uh, um art in general he says that a simple meal of hittu and ambli most certainly it quells the hunger from the point of view of body an elaborate and opulent meal also serves the same purpose but an opulent meal accomplishes two things in it mental exuberance joins bodily nourishment and as a result of this exuberance the mind attains renewed energy and vigor so he says the realm of art may be considered to be two or perhaps three pronged at first art becomes an instrument for passing time and for giving us some joyful moments then it becomes entertaining and once the mind has blossomed the art might become life propelling as well the art of transforming the mind that works in routine transactions of life to greater pursuit can be termed life propelling so when we read he says when you read uh, ramayana mahabharata initially you are attracted to the story to the uh, situations and then slowly it leads to culturing of the self it leads to samskara and another re- uh, in the uh, um, second volume there is an interesting uh, uh, story that is uh, narrated just to show how uh, even in music in dance in uh, many of the fields there is some sort of mafia that works even today we have that it was there even in those days so there was a um a, a person who came and told uh, uh, dvg i think he was uh, uh, working in the uh, office of the uh, mysore maharaja 
and uh, he said uh, he told dvg when i was a student of law in madras he had attended a concert in the parthasarathi swami sabha in madras and there was a concert by sharaba shastri who was a famous flute player and uh, when this uh, law student this young guy was uh, attending the concert he said uh, you know can you play a little louder because we can't hear and he had a um, something a critical comment and so without even realizing suddenly he was uh, somebody four five people took him to one some corner and beat him up and threw him out of the hall so that was a sort of uh, you know the uh, uh, mafia that charba shastri had because uh, and, uh, and even today there are so many such uh, subtle ways in which this uh, works so it's very interesting because uh, it, when a particular musician or an artist is not able to impress the audience by his or her talent they have to resort to some other tricks similarly we see in the movies as well there are some uh, movies that run genuinely for so many uh, days and weeks and some of them are artificially propelled because of some uh, backing of uh, producers and other people in uh, the episode about the vainikas there is one uh, very nice um, uh, uh, example where he talks about when vinay sheshana was uh, playing a concert um he was playing uh, kalyani raga and uh, while playing the veena he lifted the resonator of the veena a little bit and placed the strings close to his ears and he said ah it does not come when i want it to come it comes on its own accord from time to time <laughs> he thus welcomed the deity of talent pratibha devi and expressed his delight that indeed is yoga samadhi it is the sublime vision of nada so the the artist's life is not that when i want to create art it doesn't happen when the when there is a inspiration and there are some of the things come together then great art happens it is not like a any other profession where you go to your desk at 9 in the morning you can start working you know what is to be done you can finish all the activities by such cert, cert, certain time and you can uh, wrap up but in the case of an artist there are sometimes days together where they don't have any inspiration so nothing new comes they just have to go through with the regular practice but out of the blue suddenly there is something clicks and then something beautiful appears speaking about uh, bhairavi kempegoda uh, there are a few um, uh, um, details that i told you that one of the well known uh, politicians veerana gowda wrote to dvg in that he also mentions about how he was a close associate of swami vivekananda apparently vivekananda used to like bhairavi kempegowda's music a lot and uh, kempegowda has traveled with him for several months and one of the great possessions that uh, kempegowda used to treasure was a set of saffron robes given to him by vivekananda speaking about the uh, vainikas and violinists of bangalore there's one aside that i must mention which dvg has written about there is a veena gopal rao who was one of the vainikas of ba- bangalore here what is interesting is the uh, uh, work done by gopal rao's grandfather who was holakal narsimhaiya now narsimhaiya was running a printing press the interesting thing about this printing press was that like Uh, probably some of you from the previous generation will know today everything is computerized they create a plate and they put the ink and they they print it out whereas in the earlier days they had to um, uh, use movable type so every letter of the english or kannada alphabet was physically fit into a, a frame and then that frame was inked and then the paper will be printed so at a given point of time they would print uh, eight pages what is called one form so eight pages will be f- uh, set on a uh, place on a uh, bed and inked and printed so once the eight pages are printed then they would take out all the letters again t- type set the next set of uh, pages and do it so this composite the these people were called compositors who would actually uh, put these letters together and they were also known as the notorious printers devil who would make uh, mistakes uh, so many times but the interesting thing is gopal rao had hired vaidikas to do the composition so these people knew all the mantras and shlokas and stotras from memory 
so they didn't have to refer to any document usually what the compositor does is when the final proof of the um, uh, the manuscript is given to them they keep that on the one side look at the letters and they fit it because they have to see the author's writing and then fit create the page but these compositors who are vaidikas they knew all the vedic mantras and the stotras and shlokas from memory so they didn't have to refer to any of these documents and they were able to you know churn out page after page of uh, perfect uh, text without a single mistake so so much so that whenever people used to go to bookstores they will want narsimhaya's publication because it will be free of mistakes and cut to you know 50 60 years later when the when the computerization happened people who had no idea of uh, type setting and composition and uh, the the work involved well, as long as people knew how to use a computer they were taken by m printing presses and the quality drastically declined you can see for example some of the works in the 1930s 40s even mysore university uh, uh, publications of the 60s and you can look at the way things are uh, in the, in the last 20 30 years it has drastically reduced in quality simply because the specialization which was there at that time is no longer there in the in the printing industry so now we will go on to uh, the next uh, character in the uh, uh, second volume samgo binduraya or sg bindurao who was a very good uh, gamaki he was uh, used to do uh, kavya vachana the starting itself you know at uh, uh, one afternoon at about 3 o'clock binduraao comes to dvg's house and he says oh when did you arrive he said i left chitradurga in the morning and came here at around 11 Uh, went to my brother's house uh, had lunch there and i came here i am now 92 years old i thought i will just share this information with you he said oh how did you come uh, did you take some vehicle he pointed to his legs and he says what is the need of a vehicle when i have this and uh, he said uh, they had a exchange and he said i am going to chamraj pet and uh, i have to meet some friends so dvg says it's so hot shall i arrange for a vehicle he says no no what's the need for a vehicle i'll just go walking and this is the last time dvg saw him so he, he was 92 years old and uh, still very very bright and able to walk and uh, do uh, you know all activities by himself he was working in uh, some government department and uh, also doing a lot of uh, kavya vachana basically singing uh, uh, verses from older works uh, it set to some raga and uh, he used to teach gamaka he used to teach gamaka lessons at the kannada sahitya parishad and so on what was a hobby at one point slowly became his full time profession and uh, dvg talks about uh, he says whenever i remember bindu rao a story narrated by ramakrishna paramahamsa comes to mind ramakrishna speaks about a a, a scholar who was called by a king to give an exposition on the bhagavata so the scholar uh, is invited by the king so he prepares he goes through the whole bhagavata and prepares and when he is ready he goes to the king he is uh, told that yeah, yeah king is little busy right now you come back a uh, little later maybe a week later so then he says anyway i have another week's time so i will again prepare so he goes through the bhagavata once more and then again he goes to the palace this is oh the king is busy right now so come maybe another week later and after one week the messenger comes and the king is ready to listen but by this time he has read the bhagavata two three times and realizes all this is just maya it is useless he says i don't need to impress the king i am happy where i am thank you very much so binduraya who was uh, uh, doing this as a hobby Uh, and uh, took it up as a full time thing realized that uh, what whatever is there in the gamaka vachana and the bhagavata is far more than some piddly pension that he was receiving and uh, here we, we uh, there is a small uh, note at the end where uh, dvg we can see dvg's uh, mindset we can also see the uh, problems that are there in the larger establishment of the government so when uh, at one point of time he had the uh, chance to meet one of the ministers and dvg says you know there are two people who are embodiments of kannada culture and uh, our tradition and uh, they have all grown old one is mysore vasudevacharya who is 90 years and uh, bindu rao is 80 years now 
and their voices are treasures they must be captured for posterity and the people in the future should know how vasudevacharya and bindurao sounded so please make arrangement for a tape recorder because the great vidwans it is not uh, just you say now sing and they, they cannot sing something with great inspiration sometimes whenever in the maybe in the middle of the night or early in the morning somewhere they may get inspiration so if they have a tape recorder and a few cassettes then they'll be able to listen to that and whenever they are in the mood whenever they get inspiration they'll be able to uh, record uh, and uh, then we can preserve it and finally uh, this uh, minister says definitely uh, and he even writes a letter from delhi saying that yes i have informed the chief minister of mysore about my suggestion the chief minister has authorized this to happen and all this kind of protocol is there but ultimately this never uh, the never was realized and uh, e even though dvg is upset that you know this uh, this never uh, came to fruition he says the government is a colossal business ministers might be facing a lot of hardships hurdles entanglements and hindrances since i am not the one who has seen government first hand i shouldn't pass strictures without knowing its difficulties you see look at the he says i am deep regret that a great person like bindu rao's music is not captured at the same time he is not accusing today we see lot of people accusing a government enu martla useless fellows it is very easy to say but look at the wisdom and viveka of dv users i have never run a government i have not been a chief minister i don't know what difficulties they have i am making a request to them they have not fulfilled it it's okay but this sort of uh, empathy which we see in uh, his uh, this is not just one place all through his writings we see that empathy uh, yes we try our best we will put at uh, petitions in fact uh, many of the uh, shishya varga of dbg would go to several places make a list of all the difficulties uh, faced by people and based on that dbg will write long letters to the government to the municipal corporation and uh, so on out of it some of these things would happen and some of them will not happen but he never bothered about that he would religiously write petitions and uh, 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 talk to people tell uh, because almost all the chief ministers ministers everybody would come and visit uh, dvg he was such a important uh, political figure also so how udo shanka udbeku that's what uh, dvg was doing after speaking about some of the uh, 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 artists that dvg uh, talks about in the second volume then in the last few episodes he uh, he has some very interesting discussions on who are the rasikas what kind of people rasika renthavaru who are these rasikas and he talks about kalopasane and uh, the, dif the the nature of uh, uh, what it takes to create art so here on the one hand he has discussed the lives and uh, the uh, uh, great creations of artists and then the distilled wisdom he has given in these few chapters and here he uh, in this uh, this particular chapter on who are the rasikas some places i feel that dvg also laments about the past that you know those days was very good but when we see the kind of complaints that he has it is the same complaints we have today also so that that shows that maybe things have not changed so much and uh, the, right at the beginning he says the purpose of uh, uh, you know reminiscing all these musicians and uh, rasikas is simply the lament that rasikya has decreased in today's world everywhere and in all walks of life the business mindset reflected by the materialistic nature of people has increased the number of people asking the question what do you get by listening to music is increasing this is the lament we have today also because whenever we say literature or dance or music the question that many people may ask is what is it what is in it for me what is the benefit will i get by going to a music program instead if i spend that 3 hours doing some extra ot in my office i may get uh, some good appraisal or i may get a salary hike but even today there are a lot of people who are very much interested in uh, in uh, different art forms the number of uh, carnatic musicians the number of hindustani musicians are only increasing about the quality we will uh, that is a separate discussion but there is a lot of interest in uh, several of these art forms and he uh, uh, to uh, enumerate what he says or to uh, elaborate he talks about a, a wedding at a wealthy landlord's house so there is a huge pandal is invested lot of money on all the sofas and electric lighting and everything he has called uh, music uh, uh, you know for a music concert 
and the vocalist everybody arrived and they are come by some uh, um, uh, you know with all the paraphernalia everything they come by a car so then he request the landlord can you take care of the expenses of the car he says no everything is already included in the contract so okay fine they pay their own money okay what about some coffee or refreshments no no everything is already in the included in the contract we are paying you so they go somewhere and get some coffee and sit down and then they have the music concert and finally when uh, the uh, um, at the end of the thing when he has to pay the money and everything he says sir what is this you are singing for some time then suddenly you stopped and uh, then he looks at a mridanga player half the time you are just sitting and watching him this violinist sometimes he's playing and then sometimes he's waiting finally he looks at the guy playing the tambura you are the real person from the beginning sincerely till the end you have played tambura you are it's worth paying you the money <laughs> so this is the kind of uh, you know the rasikya which is there and that's what uh, uh, D, uh, dvg says apparently even in the west there are such people they are called the nuvo rich or the new rich what is interesting is for lot of classical arts in that period of time there was a great support from the business community uh, which probably is a is a different scenario today because those days lot of traders and merchants who were having shops in chikpete and all these uh, old bangalore areas they were actively supporting classical arts like drama dance and uh, music whereas over a period of time probably with the advent of cinema i think now there is a, a shift towards the the wealthy and the, the business people going to slightly more uh, you know modern kind of music and and dance and then he gives a very interesting uh, scenario he says let us say you are invited to a great meal which is going to have lot of laddus and chirotis and everything in a very close relatives house and on the other hand there is some concert of ms subalakshmi where will you go if you go to your relatives house you will be invited you will be welcomed with great warmth and affection they will feed you they will give an extra chiroti if you like they will you will be treated as a maharaja if you go to a concert of uh, some musician nobody is going to see you there nobody is going to recognize you you have to go find a seat yourself nobody will ask you uh, a, a, any questions uh, how you are nothing but where will you go there is no right and wrong answer but the question is the he says the character of a true rasika is to give prominence to things that brings happiness to the uh, and happiness and joy to his mind and that enriches his mind and soul and then he talks about t s venkanaya who was a great rasika and uh, they were having a discussion about how the uh, bees behave in the early morning in the, when the first rays of the sun come so what they do is the next morning they wake up at 4 o'clock and run to lalbagh and he says both of us were coffee addicts but in this quest of going to lalbagh we completely forgot about our coffee and we went to lalbagh and somehow we spoke to that uh, sentry and said let us go we are trying going there for something so they convince the guard and they go in at 5 o'clock and then they observe the the way the bees behave when the, when the first rays of the sun comes so he says first you go to surahonne then one padri tree and then one uh, uh, hippe mara so they go all this and then finally they both come to the conclusion that all the great sanskrit poets of the past they have really understood and they have seen this and captured the nature of the bees and uh, dvg says rasika is interested in the quality rather than the quantity of a substance he regards and respects the emotional aspect of the substance rather than the commercial value now just because something is very expensive doesn't mean it has to be very very good and metaphorically uh, rasika is the resident of the kingdom of mind dvg says it does not mean that he doesn't care for the physical realm without the body there is no mind but for the rasika what body experiences is like branches of a tree while what the mind experiences like the flowers and fruits a rasika spends time in the physical endeavors only as much as it is required but he is more curious about the mind whatever brings joy to the mind forms the essence of his life so this idea of how rasa enriches our uh, mind and elevates us and creates samskara and very often for us to enjoy rasa doesn't require great amount of money doesn't require uh, some special often doesn't require some special skills if you want to sing or if you want to write a poem 
you need to have definitely put lot of effort but to enjoy some great work of art does not require that level of skill it does not often require a lot of money what it requires is the attitude and the leisure the mental space to appreciate it then speaking about uh, kalopasana uh, he talks about the culturing that is required for enjoying any classical art whether it's music or dance those days people from all walks of life had that culturing because the opportunity to listen to classical music classical dance was uh, was very high there is no other distractions today we have so many other distractions apart from the classical arts whereas 100 years ago if somebody wanted to spend an evening in an interesting way there is no television there is uh, probably no radio everywhere the only way was to go and listen to some uh, bhajans in some neighborhood bhajana mandali or go watch a nice play which is uh, being uh, uh, shown somewhere in the neighborhood or a music concert or a dance recital or spend time in a friend's house uh, chit chatting about something so the means for enjoyment were very limited and uh, did not cost as much so this possibility was there and therefore people from all walks of life he says whether it's zamindars traders vaidikas government servants all these groups had listeners with the ability to understand the true worth of good music he then talks about an interesting episode of the great maestro vinay sheshanna who had gone uh, to madras for a concert and uh, there he went to the uh, house of uh, tirukodi kaval krishnayar or i think tirukodi kaval krishnayar had come to meet him now uh, krishnayar was a very great violinist of that era and uh, when they were uh, having a conversation a third person came uh, uh, govinda swami or malay koti govinda swami pillai who was also a very very great violinist so finally uh, when uh, govinda swami comes uh, tirukodi kaval krishnayar asks him so what are you what are you up to these days what have you been working he says uh, i have been practicing as usual okay so let's listen to something what you have been playing he says i didn't uh, get my violin krishnayar says okay here's a violin because krishnayar always used to carry his violin with him he used to sleep with his violin he was his violin was inseparable from him so he took the violin back gave it to him uh, he said okay uh, uh, govind swami played the viriboni atatala varnam in bhairavi raga he played in three speeds very good uh, now you have attained the uh, you know your worth to put a rosin on my bow you know when we play the violin we have a small uh, thing uh, it's called rosin which uh, creates the friction necessary to play the bow so as now you are worthy to put rosin to my bow and uh, govinda swami says this is your kindness your anugraha thank you and he does namaskaram and goes and vinay sheshana says what are you saying so extraordinarily he played and you are uh, you are being so cavalier about it then uh, krishnayar took the violin and from the third speed what he had played he took that as the first speed and then played three speeds further <laughs> then uh, <laughs> vinay sheshana says you are not a human being you are some uh, from other some other uh, planet <laughs> it is not possible for human beings to play like this so that is a sort of uh, you know ex- expertise uh, people had at that time and uh, K- krishnayar also there is a, a famous uh, there are a lot of interesting episodes about him once he had to come for a concert he was playing accompaniment for a great musician and uh, already the concert has started because uh, he came late usually when uh, violinist and uh, mridangam uh, when they play uh, as accompaniment they have to tune their instruments to the pitch of the singer it takes a few minutes so they they uh, play the tanpura and they listen to that and they tune the violin because it may not when you are traveling it they shifts a little bit but krishnayar came and sat down he heard the pitch in which he was singing he realized that his violin was not in pitch but adjusting where he could play he took that as a sa and played it now technically if you p- play the instrument you know how difficult that is uh, so this is a uh, expertise that they had and uh, uh, unfortunately we don't have a recording of krishnayar because um, there was a gramophone uh, company which approached him he was not uh, from a period before that it he i think he must have died in the early part of the 20th century he recorded something for a 78 rpm which was a short 3 uh, and a half minute piece and he heard it 
and then he took the gramophone record and broke it. He said, I don't want the future generation to listen to this and think that oh, this is the level of violin. They should not be influenced by this. Let them create their own path. I don't think this is a real uh, estimation of my playing. And they should not be limited by this. So unfortunately, we don't have a recording. We do have a recording of Malay Koti Govinda Swami Pillai. We have a recording of Papa Venkatramaya. But we don't have a recording of Krishna here because of this uh, reason. In the uh, uh, penultimate chapter of this uh, second volume, DVG uh, brings to our uh, uh, notice the importance of Pratibha in uh, any art form. Pratibha is talent, uh, creativity, or even you can say genius. Any amount of practice can only get us to some extent. Without practice, no art form can uh, survive, no art form can thrive in a, in a person. But practice is only to a certain extent. It is not the, it is, it, uh, it is a necessary but not sufficient condition, like we would say. Unless there is practice, uh, the form of the art will not be under our control. But mere form is not art. So he says, Pratibha is the power that gives shape and characteristics to the musical ingredients, that is the musical notes. DVG says, of course, this good fortune is obtained with the blessings of the divine or as a result of the good deeds done in previous birth or by a combination of both. However, I think it is uh, something which cannot be explained so easily. It is uh, beyond that. Sadhana and Pratibha, that is assiduous practice and uh, talent, creativity, imagination, these go hand in hand. But there is another overarching aspect that supports both of them, DVG says. This third aspect is Swanubhava. Any art form is a transfer of heartfelt experience to the other person. We are transferring some emotionally rich content to the other person. In literature, it's through words. In the case of music, it is through sound. In the case of dance, it is through visual um, movement. So unless we have um, a experience, a rich emotional experience of the world, we will not have the necessary content to create great art. This is the touchstone for all real art, DVG says. First, we should experience in our heart something we love and desire. Then that experience should be transferred to another's heart. In this process, the singer, here singer, it could be dancer, it could be poet, should realize the standard of his own singing within himself in the depths of his heart. If his music is pleasing to himself, then it can please others. This holds good for every student of art. Whether it's author, sculptor, actor, singer, whoever it is, it, it, uh, the honest critique of his creation lies within him, DBG says. Later he goes on to say, music should create a sense of positive disruption in our mind. Else it is not music, it is just sound. It should shake us, but in a positive way. When we talk about sadhana or practice, there are two aspects of uh, practice in any art form. One is imitation, where the teacher sings a particular line, the student repeats it. Or in, when somebody is learning Veda, the teacher will recite one line of the mantra, the student will repeat twice. Or if it is a dance or anything, there is a imitation. The other part is new creation. Now, uh, DVG says, what we see these days is that more and more effort is going towards imitation. Attempts towards original creation have, re have reduced. And without original creation, any art form is going to become stale. So many times we find, uh, let's say if you take a Carnatic musician, you take a certain Kriti uh, or a Varanam or a Tillana, they would have sung that 500 times in the span of their career. But every single time, if it is a good musician, it would sound different. Because there is an original uh, creativity aspect of presenting a composition. Although it is a composed work, although it is to be sung in the, in the same way, there is always scope for certain uh, creativity, certain change that happens on every occasion. Now, unless we do imitation, unless we are able to precisely imitate our teacher, we cannot learn. 
but that is only the first step to art we have to go transcend that to the next step where we create something on our own dbg writes nada madurya melodic beauty was the essential aspect of the music of the olden days these days cleverness in manipulating taala has become the mainstay of music the artists of the yesteryear gave prominence to raga alapana they took up majestic ragas like todi bhairavi shankara bharana and sang them elaborately uh, with uh, detailed alapana it was very common to present a raga in the vilamba and the uh, uh, madhyalaya that he says today uh, what happens is it is all uh, 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 you know taala oriented whereas the uh, in the olden days the ragas flirtatious movement its delightful play and its myriad aspects of beauty should fill the ears of the rasika engulf his mind and drown him completely in the raga and it should possess one's ear for a week or 10 days irrespective of where he goes it should haunt him dvg laments of late alapana is fading away while swarakalpana is increasing in addition the counting the beats of the taala is getting louder and uh, there is a uh, uh, there is lot of uh, percussion elements more beating of the drum doubtless the art of percussion is great it has a strong base in shastra and it is also very good but uh, uh, like he say he compares it to the salt in food the salt is very good one of the primary thing is salt but who will enjoy drinking salt water and how much of it they can drink so salt is necessary rhythm is necessary in music but if it is only rhythm it is will be drinking salt water which is uh, you know what it is dvg <laughs> uh, says to delineate the beauty of music and to describe it is next to impossible a particular song gets value because of two elements the refinement and competence of the singer the sensitivity and connoisseurship of the listener when the response from the listener is Uh, is able to appreciate even the subtle movements of the raga that further inspires the singer if somebody who has uh, especially uh, after covid and everything so many times people have to sit in their houses and perform one who has tried to speak in front of a uh, camera or sing will know the uh, difficulty even if there is one person who is sitting and enjoying what we are speaking or what we are singing what we are performing that is enough but to just uh, perform in front of a camera it is very difficult it uh, the without any reaction without any response from the audience it is very dif- difficult finally uh, uh, dvg ends this book with uh, a very nice uh, discussion on art experience which is uh, rasa and art experience follows samskara or aes- uh, aesthetic uh, refinement he says so that is basically richness of the art experience depends on how cultured the mind is then he goes into a detailed discussion taking uh, the different um, art forms like uh, painting and uh, music and poetry and how uh, the three uh, stages in art experience he talks about mana prasada serenity of the mind bhava vesha intense emotional excitement and tatparya chintana contemplation about the essence and in each of these um, uh, arts he uh, discusses uh, which is a it's almost like a uh, shastrik exposition and a very important uh, element in uh, um, any art is the appropriateness or propriety or auchitya this auchitya is something that we have to keep in mind because once that is set everything else will fall in place because auchitya itself means the right proportion of all the elements that go into making of an art and incidentally this was translated by shri shah who is here with us this particular episode now with this we go to the third volume uh, i don't think i'll be able to complete the third volume today there's so many interesting episodes but at least uh, i'll try to cover uh, uh, part of this and then later take it up uh, at another uh, time to discuss uh, in greater uh, detail and uh, go through the other uh, episodes as well right at the start of the third volume which is dedicated to uh, literary giants uh, primarily those who were associated with the kannada sahitya parishad of that time he starts off by saying there are many ways to serve language and literature among those i deem the following as important he gives five things one is kavya nirmana which is a creation of 
గుడ్ లిటరేచర్ కావ్య వ్యాసంగా విచ్ ఇస్ అ డీప్ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ లిటరేచర్ కావ్య గుణ విమర్శన విచ్ ఇస్ అ క్రిటికల్ ఎగ్జామినేషన్ ఆఫ్ ది గుడ్ అండ్ బ్యాడ్ క్వాలిటీస్ ఆఫ్ ఏ లిటరీ వర్క్ ఫోర్త్ ఇస్ ద వ్యాకరణాది శాస్త్ర పాండిత్య సో స్కాలర్లీ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఆఫ్ వ్యాకరణ అండ్ అదర్ శాస్త్రాస్ ఫిఫ్త్ హీ సెస్ ఇస్ ఉత్సాహ ప్రచార ఎంతూజియాస్టిక్ ప్రాపగేషన్ అండ్ హీ సెస్ ఐ బిలీవ్ మై ప్లేస్ ఇస్ ఇన్ దిస్ పర్ హ్యాబ్స్ ఇన్ ద ఫిఫ్త్ విచ్ ఇస్ ద ఎంతూజియాస్టిక్ ప్రాపగేషన్ ఆల్ దో డివిజీ హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ వాజ్ ఇన్వాల్వ్ ఇన్ ఆల్ దిస్ హీ హెస్ డన్ కావ్య నిర్మాణ హీ హెస్ డన్ కావ్య వ్యాసంగా he has uh, uh, done kavya vimarshe and he has also uh, very very good in many shastras but he identifies himself as a enthusiastic proponent of uh, literature and he writes i am a devotee of literature it is my ardent belief that literature has the power to fill one's life with exuberance and to develop the quality of sattva in him in fact among all the arts if you take uh, painting music dance um, and literature i think the easiest for everybody the most inexpensive is literature because there is no investment uh, hardly any investment when it comes to literature if you want to learn music or you want to attend a music concert you have to find some place you have to go you have to pay money you have to buy a ticket here you can just walk into any library and read a book it is so easy literature is available for everybody all we need is language every human being has some access to language if they learn to uh, read if they are literate or even if they listen to now you don't even have to be literate there are so many audio books and uh, podcasts and thing on youtube even you just need to have the mental space and time and inclination you can engage with literature it is such a accessible uh, art form dvg then talks about the fascination for establishing committees this is one of the any problem is there ha a committee bithayenge let us have a committee to discuss uh, this uh, solve this problem whatever uh, uh, issue is there we will have one committee a tooth broke set up a committee the hair is greying uh, set up a committee the food is not great okay let us bring an assembly of people and have a discussion so this is the way we want to solve the problem some sabhi some samiti sabha samsad this kind of uh, 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 samiti but there is a lot of limitation in organizations dvg talks about one samuel johnson who sat and prepared a dictionary for english language if it had been a, a committee it would have taken a lot of time and somebody would not have done the work oh a to uh, j has done a k madoro kelsa madila sir sorry this person didn't do the work so we have uh, assigning that work of k to somebody else and then the l some problem is there they have not done it correctly so like this it happens in fact when uh, we had a very good opportunity to read uh, the history of dharma shastra uh, by uh, uh, maha mahopadhyaya pv kane and uh, all of us felt that it was possible only because kane one person sat for 60 years and wrote that series of books if it had been done by a committee it would not have been done first of all even if it had been done it would not be so clear with such a single uh, voice because it was one person and everything was inside his head he would able to make all the connections and have this uh, ekavakita there is a lot of role to be played by organizations but there are certain things that organizations cannot do dvg himself started so many organizations he was the driving force for uh, many social institutions but despite that he realized there is a limitation to organization and some things can only be done by great individuals he writes um, these kind of things is accomplishment of individual sattva samitis and sanghas are of little use in the realm of literature and perhaps in all domains of human endeavor it is the individual sattva essence goodness uh, uh, energy that has given us great creation that is worthy of adulation it is owing to the attitude of universal welfare that arises in the mind of a gifted individual he or she is divinely imbued with an inspiration that others don't have a zeal that is uncommon this great individual then becomes the seed for all extraordinary accomplishments as a result we can what we can potentially get is great literature great philosophy great art great politics and the root of this greatness has to be deep in the heart of the special individual 
this is what i wish to say first all accomplishments come from individual sattva and he says kriya siddhi sattve bhavati mahatam no pakarane at the same time he also talks about the uh, importance of uh, institutions now we know institution uh, which university did uh, kalidasa go to which uh, 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 great institution did shakespeare come from they are all great individuals who gave us uh, this uh, the remarkable creations however the role of these organizations is to propagate the work done by these great individuals they can support the work done by uh, these individuals the uh, the 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 spread that uh, institutions have is very great now uh, an individual can sit in a particular place compose a great poem but the the taking that poem to all the corners of the state can be done by a, a governmental organization or by a non governmental uh, ngo um, which is interested in literature now he says what is the summary of this criticism there are a few limitations to what an organization can do for the service of language and literature unmindful of these limitations if it expands its realm of work that will result in no work getting done or something worse if it fails to accomplish what is within the bounds of its strength that also will lead to a similar state of inaction and failure so the work that an organization like kannada sahitya parishad for example or any other literary organization is nourishment of scholarship the dvg as usual three points nourishment of scholarship propagation of literature enthusiasm among the common people and determining good standards for the public and he says the parishad has two faces one is turned towards the common people the other face is turned towards the scholars the scholarly activity is of two kinds refinement of literary usage and evaluating the worthiness of a literary work this is the sort of activity that a sahitya parishad or a literary organization can do to expect them to create some new literature is uh, foolish finally he uh, uh, has a small uh, paragraph about the language hostilities so this is not new even those days there were all this problem of uh, of uh, uh, different uh, language uh, hostility of course he says this has arisen in our country of late which means now looking back it is uh, some 50 60 years again like yesterday i was mentioning how he uh, reconciles between different schools of philosophy and any intolerance to one school is uh, like a disrespect to the truth in the similar vein you can see dvg saying that the wisdom that a man must gain in life is far greater than what is contained in a given language even sanskrit which is particularly well suited for the wisdom of adhyatma and spirituality can hardly be as effective when it comes to sharing wisdom of the material world of the day to day life so the wisdom we need cannot be fulfilled by the literature of a single language therefore when seen from the perspective of knowledge and wisdom the various language becomes aids and associates complementing each other therefore from a purely utilitarian point of view it is immensely beneficial for one to learn multiple languages and uh, of course he says it is my belief that such language related hostility and jealousy are inappropriate so when we can enjoy and uh, uh, have uh, opportunity to uh, explore something from another language why would we want to uh, say no to that he first starts off with a uh, uh, small discussion on some of the monthly magazines that were popular in those days and uh, there is a very nice chapter on the service done by the europeans to kannada language uh, time and again we see uh, dvg and his school of uh, uh, thought whether uh, even with uh, sr ramaswamy sir he always brings to our mind the importance of recognizing the work done by people who otherwise we may feel are hostile the role uh, of the uh, 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 the britishers in india or some of the work done by the christian missionaries to kannada language 
they they might have done it with a uh, with a very uh, s- small uh, focus of uh, conversion or um, uh, maybe some other vested interests in fact he says did christian missionaries work on kannada out of their reverence to the language or was it out of reverence to christianity this seems like a meaningless question to me meaningless as well as immaterial let's presume that there was a combination of both these intentions but there is no place for even an iota of ambiguity in realizing who the beneficiaries of their actions were so their intentions might have been uh, to uh, uh, convert or whatever but the good consequences was help was uh, there for all the kannada people so this shows the sort of gratitude inherent rina pragna that tvg has at the same time he also talks about how the the the, the kind of humorous uh, episode during uh, the translation of the bible into kannada one of the people who they consulted was rana simacharya a great scholar and uh, one of the days uh, when uh, narsimha acharya was uh, talking with um, uh, one of the other uh, scholars after this uh, meeting uh, sorry rana narsimha acharya has told the story to dbg this uh, he was not on the committee uh, the kari basava shastri was on the committee so rana narsimha acharya asked kari basava shastri so how is this translation work going what is the uh, what is the latest update because there were a few um, uh, christian uh, uh, pastors who were there and also they had uh, got uh, ayya shastri and karibasava shastri f- who knew kannada very well to help them in the translation so then shastri uh, apparently told uh, rana simacharya you know there are a lot of conflicts that arise between us and the white people you know they have translated uh, the english sentence like avanu buddhiyannu hondiddane he possesses intelligence when we say this is not the common way of writing in kannada then the chair of the committee say okay if that is the case then please raise your hand then uh, karibaso shastri said the whites raised their hands and our legs arose this is the progress of the work dvg gives a very nice uh, uh, small uh, 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 bio uh, exposition on basavappa shastri and his contribution and shrikantesh gowda his contribution to uh, kannada literature uh, he talks about uh, a magazine called shri krishna sukti and uh, which unfortunately went out of uh, print uh, at some point of time it became a hallmark of linguistic pride in the dakshina kannada region it was uh, uh, it was something which was he says uh, reason for the success of kannada but our kannada people lacked the spirit to save it from extinction this is a tragedy that hasn't yet faded away from my mind he says this with regard to few other uh, instances where Uh, we were not able to preserve it and uh, this is very difficult to pinpoint on one person as a society sometimes we fail to preserve uh, the uh, the great uh, um, work that is going on speaking about uh, sg narsimacharya who he also talks about in the uh, uh, first volume uh, some of the padya sangrahas that sg narsimacharya had done he had done it uh, so well because he understood the language to that uh, degree and uh, even today there is so much of discussion on what should be included in the textbooks how the kannada textbook should be and uh, what sort of uh, lessons we must have if we look at what was there in the past and we just use like much of that content today that will solve the problem straight away there is no need to reinvent the wheel all these writings of uh, whether it is dv gundappa or um, kuempu or masti or bendre all these great works if we include the samples of that uh if we include the works like uh, padya sangraha padya sara of sgn this will solve the problem there is no need to again go hunting uh, for works or we don't need to go looking for uh, the navya uh, uh, writers uh, to uh, give our uh, students then he talks about uh, ra narsimacharya uh, another great scholar and in fact uh, uh, dr ganesh spoke uh, in great detail about ra narsimacharya uh, Uh, last year when we had the exemplars of indian wisdom from uh, karnataka uh, his uh, contribution is uh, very very great and even in the um, uh, he was a part of some of the um, um, uh, textbook he was in the president of the textbook committee so the dvg talks about the episode where he will come into the committee meeting and everybody would uh, come after him and say look at this uh, entry sir look at this particular essay look at this poem and so on and uh, 
he will say okay let us have a look at it slowly open the book and go through them yes yes this uh, poor people have worked very hard very good so the, he, that is the way of saying that it is not up to the mark so everybody will try to uh, uh, suggest something yes yes they have worked hard but let us take the best uh, works in one day uh, narsimacharya tells uh, uh, dvg see for many years i have collected the indian antiquary magazine i want to uh, give it to the kannada uh, sahitya parishad will it be useful if i give it to parishad so dvg says if you are going to give it then i will come walking on my head he says you don't have to do that i will come and give it to you and the next day he brings all the books and gives it to the kannada sahitya parishad then there is a uh, another nice story there is uh, a famous uh, grammarian of uh, kannada called bhatta kalanka who wrote about uh, kannada grammar in sanskrit uh, shabda shabdanu shasana so that shabdanu shasana was out of print and they had uh, decided the government press decided to bring out a new edition and uh, second edition rana simacharya was the uh, was the editor but uh, he had prepared the work he had to write the preface for some reason he had not found the time to write the preface and he was uh, postponing it postponing it and uh, finally uh, dvg and bellavena uh, venkatnanappa and all these people how do we bring it out it's uh, not correct to blame rana simacharya so what to do so finally uh, some of the friends they said okay we will put, we they came together and they put a plan so one afternoon bellava uh, venkatnanappa and nangapuram venkatesh ayyar and uh, ts venkatnaya dvg all of them uh, went to atara kacheri the uh, which is uh, in front of the uh, archaeology department and, uh, and uh, the, it was in in the atara kacheri so they went to the archaeology department and sent a slip with their name so ra narsimha acharya was uh, why they give my, some of course i know them and he comes out this is what is all this formality and then uh, what they do is i they they put a garland around rana simacharya's neck and they give him two lemons and then there is one they open a letter formal letter of request and the uh, subject is says the kannada literary world is suffering because of the non availability of bhatta kalanka shabdhanu shasana the only person who can solve this problem is the reverend uh, arna simacharya of course we know that he does not have the free time but even so he must take some time from his busy schedule and make it happen and all this thing in a very serious uh, thing as if they are reading a citation and then nasima acharya has a la- loud laugh and he says uh, what is all this drama and everything i was little busy don't worry i will get it done and soon enough it was done the Uh, nature of relationship between uh, dvg and uh, rana simacharya can be captured in one uh, sentence he says when i would visit narsimacharya's house by around 3 in the afternoon i would not be aware of the time till it became dark in the room so uh, that is the kind of uh, interactions that uh, they had where the, they would not realize the passing of the time along with uh, sg nasimacharya and uh, uh, r nasimacharya few other people who were very close to dvg was uh, ma ramanuja ayyar and uh, alasinga acharya of course many of you will be familiar with alasinga acharya because he translated ramayana mahabharata bhagavata into simple kannada prose Now, out of um, um, uh, these people Uh, M. A. Ramanuja Iyengar was uh, particularly uh, interested in manuscriptology and uh, looking at manuscripts and preparing editions, um, uh, printed editions of manuscripts which have not been published before. And this is a very very tedious process, and only people who know what it takes can appreciate the work that goes into looking at ancient manuscripts. Many times it may be powdered; you have to be very careful there to apply some kind of Uh, you know a concoction made from certain leaves so that it darkens the letter and then the letters are all written continuously uh, it's not like you know nowadays when you see a work of uh, you know poetry you will have four lines at the end of the second line there will be a thing it's clearly marked out those days it is all continuously written it's also true with the english there was no space between the uh, words because 
the when we speak we don't have any space between the words it's all coming at one one go so while writing also while printing the, if you see some of the old uh, gutenberg uh, 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 prints it is all printed continuously so while reading one has to figure out where the uh, breaks are so to decipher the script one has to and know the language one has to know the script in detail and then to write it down and then ensure that it goes for print so he says mere erudition is not sufficient for this task in addition to scholarship an incredible amount of enthusiasm patience and forbearance is required to prepare the draft from the manuscript and then ensure that it is right to have it printed and check the galley proofs and again it is a long drawn process and because of the great work done by people like that today it's so easy for us to go and pick up a copy of uh, any of the great uh, works and read it and now everything is digitized so you can just take out your phone and uh, read kalidasa but for that for all these uh, to happen today this uh, work by so many such uh, unknown people has uh, played a role then we uh, along with the story he talks about one hj bhaba uh, who was uh, the uh, uh, who was head of the um, uh, department of education he was earlier uh, assistant professor in elfenstein college then he was education secretary to the mysore government just to show you how perceptive people were in uh, in public office there is one incident uh, which uh, dvg uh, came to know from a reliable source there was a sanskrit school in a small village in kolar district and it was sustained by a government grant and there was some um, uh, i think complained that the school wasn't running and uh, this uh, they had said we should uh, not we should stop this uh, government grant then while writing some comments uh, about this complaint baba writes the inspector has complained that the school doesn't follow proper timings but the government hasn't provided the school with a clock and therefore the villagers are following their preferred timings <laughs> so unless we ensure that everything is there how can you expect them to come on time there is a complaint that there is an assembly of villagers in the school who aren't students let them be there it is definitely a benefit for them and not a loss if they listen to a word of two of sanskrit even this paves the way for promoting education then he says it is also mentioned that shastri's teaching lasts till 2 in the afternoon isn't that a good thing he is a vaidika brahmana and is bound to perform daily rituals when the rituals demand more work from him he might cut short the classes and at other times he might elongate the duration of teaching thus compensating for what missed out and if the government wishes to promote education in the country it should be a little linear uh, it should be a little lenient towards vaidika brahmanas we have to primarily ask the questions are they training the students properly are the villagers respecting the work they do since the answers for both these questions are satisfactory in the case of this school the grant should not be stopped see the sort of empathy this person and he is not even a hindu he is a parsi gentleman but the keenness with which he has observed this is noteworthy and the the fact that dvg has mentioned the story is also very noteworthy but for this we won't have learnt about some of these episodes then uh, uh, writing a little bit about uh, uh, alasinga acharya uh, uh, and uh, his uh, contribution then he goes on to talk about uh, c vasudeva uh, vasudevaya so channa patna vasudevaya was a very close friend of ranasim acharya they were uh, many times they would be Uh, seen going together to a lot of public uh, functions and so on so if you can uh, just uh, kind of visualize how dvg might have composed these episodes he would have been narrating it to srr or to uh, padmanabhan or any of these people and as he is narrating when he thinks about rana simachari he is like ha when i think about him i this fellow also comes to mind okay now we will write about this guy and the, when i think about such and such a person oh the, I, i am reminded of that episode so almost in a conversational style itself this might have uh, uh, gone on and uh, srr has many time mentioned that there will be occasions where dvg will be narrating something for dictation and he will say stop 
and then tell some story which cannot be published only for the personal enjoyment of uh, the shishya varga there it cannot be published some below the belt uh, joke or maybe some uh, thing which is not to be published but just to be savored in uh, sneha goshti and then is ha uh, from now this onwards is that is off the record this is for you to now take the dictation so like this when he talks about uh, uh, one of the uh, rana sima charya then he says oh then there is this other set of uh, aingar chaps uh, mar and uh, rak and all this thing then rana sima charya connect to vasudevaiya and uh, vasudevaiya um, uh, was uh, you know um, uh, also known to um, uh, dvg and uh, he writes i urge with folded hands true language enthusiasts might kindly ensure that vasudevayya's kannada balabodhe as well as sg narsimacharya's padya sangraha and padya sara find their deserved place as prescribed textbook by the department of education and uh, also hj baba had made a note of vasudevayya's birthday and apparently would ensure that every birthday he would send 100 rupees to him and then he talks about the creation of uh, uh, the kannada sahitya parishad in more than uh, one uh, uh, more than one occasion dvg talks about having a poor memory but if you look at this one uh, uh, segment on bm shrikantaya's lecture you will know what a phenomenal memory he had the start of uh, kannada sahitya parishad bm shri apparently gave a lecture and what is the most important elements of that uh, lecture he has captured in about two pages it is not possible for many of us if we heard a lecture the previous evening to summarize that uh, important and he has summarized it he has not uh, uh, given the entire thing i'm sure he remembered more but just to summarize the salient points of something we heard uh, yesterday or a week back is difficult this is some 40 years back what he has heard he has summarized in such a beautiful way six points he has given and at the end of it he says this to the extent i remember was the essence of uh, bm shrikantaya's speech so some 60 years later not 30 60 years later in 1970 he somewhere he has written this he remembers uh, what uh, shrikantaya spoke then he speaks about some of the other uh, um, uh, characters uh, like uh, nangapuram venkatesh aingar karpur shrinivas rao when speaking about karpur shrinivas rao there is one very uh, poignant uh, episode that uh, he has narrated um, of course those days uh, tilak was a very important figure and there were a lot of people who were supporters of bal gangadhar tilak and uh, karpur shrinivas rao was a very staunch supporter of tilak's uh, party and he had great admiration for balanga tilak and used to read the uh, kesari magazine and dvg writes on the 10th day of tilak's demise karpur shrinivas rao went to the kempambudi lake along with 100 others bathed and offered the dharmodaka to the departed as per the traditional customs dharmodaka is given by the uh, immediate uh, son usually it is a uh, the eldest son of the family does it but uh, that is the kind of attachment that he had for tilak that along with so many people he went and uh, offered the dharmodaka also you can see uh, the uh, nature of uh, uh, the preparation of that time this is just a small episode um, so karpur shrinivas rao was asked to speak about um, uh, he was uh, he was uh, asked to write a critique for a for a book and for that reason he had to uh, bring forth the ideologies of hegel one of the great uh, german philosophers so he says that for the reason i uh, had to study hegel's work with utmost concentration so i have rented a separate house after taking bath wearing the clothes given by uh, uh, swami closing all the doors in the middle of the house i sit alone and meditate and think that is the routine during the entire period of parayana i keep thinking uh, so he had to uh, get somebody there some competition which is there but uh, this uh, uh, mindset that he has to he has rented a separate house he goes there and he is deeply studying something without any uh, any other distraction 
this shows the sort of dedication that uh, he had for his work. Then he has few uh, episodes on uh, um, um, on Y.K. Ramchandra Rao, where he also speaks about Raghunath Rao, and uh, there is one uh, vidwan called Togare uh, Nanjund Shastri, uh, and there was a well-known uh, person of the, those days, probably a businessman, who was bedridden due to paralysis. And uh, somebody who was close to him said, you know, when you anyway are just lying down here, you will get bored, so why don't you listen to some Puranas? And somebody who, who has suggested this also told DVG. And uh, DVG suggested, you know, this uh, Nanjunda Shastri, Togar and uh, Nanjunda Shastri can give a discourse on the Mahabharata and uh, it will be a good uh, way for you to spend your time. So every day he would go and um, uh, take the original text. He will recite a verse uh, the, in the original Sanskrita. Then he will translate it into Kannada. And from 3 o'clock till about 5, 5.30, he will do that. And uh, he started, usually when we start, he will start with Virata Parva. He started the discourse on Virata Parva. Some uh, two, three days, uh, he said, uh, you know, a uh, lot of pain. I'm sleeping on one side is uh, very boring. I'm finding a lot of pain. So the friend said, but you have been uh, listening to this Rama Mahabharata lecture. There's a discourse happening. What is a discourse, man? Some Rishi came, some Rishi went, some Tirtha Kshetra, some river. Extremely boring. Then uh, that friend said, yeah, yeah, you know, at your age, what is this listening to all these stories? You must have Tattvopadesha. You should listen to philosophy. So why don't you listen to Bhagavad Gita? So then uh, he said, next day when Shastri came, he said, sir, I think there are some, these Gitas are there. I don't know what some Gitas. So can you tell me some Gitas from tomorrow? <laughs> so then uh, Shastri said, okay, fine, we will start with Bhagavad Gita. And he started... Uh, telling the, the second uh, second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Then after a couple of days, you know, he heard this and he said, Sir, what is this? You know, they are just blabbering something in these Gitas. It is all some, uh, some complicated things, some self-control, it seems, controlling the senses, self-regulation. It's like a broken record again and again saying the same thing. But this Nanjunda Shastri got furious. He said, how can you use such words when you're talking about Bhagavad Gita? And all this requires a samskara from previous birth. You know, all this uh, vasanas from your previous birth is not there. O the only vasana you want is the, that of chandra vadanas, the girls with moon-like faces. So vasana is, uh, one is of course the uh, previous uh, birth and also it is the fragrance. So he's uh, making a pun. And then he comes and complains to DVG, why did you put me to this kind of uh, trouble? Like uh, this uh, Togare Nanjuna Shastri is also Kadaba Nanjuna Shastri uh, who he talks about and M.S. Puttana. Then there is a long, uh, almost I think uh, more than 100 pages about an extraordinary character called uh, Bellave Venkatnaranappa. I think I don't have the time to get into Bellave uh, today. Uh, in the next series I will start from Bellave Venkatnaranappa. But I want to say few things, uh, uh, some observations of uh, mine uh, regarding these volumes and um, how we can see this in uh, light of our uh, society today. Um, especially in the last 20-30 uh, years, there is a great increase in the clamor for rights. We have the right to do this, we have this right. And anybody who is better placed than us, we say, oh, you are a privileged person, you have privilege, you know, you are, you are a man, so you are privileged, you are from the such and such a religion, so you are privileged, such and such a caste, you are privileged. And because of your privilege, you are able to say this, what about people who are underprivileged and so on. But in this whole uh, discussion of rights and privileges, we have forgotten duties and the uh, gratitude. Because the other, other face of rights, so one is I have the right to, um, uh, you know, be edu right to education, for example. Student says, I have the right to be educated. The other side of the same coin is that it is a duty of the guru to teach, impart knowledge in the right way. It is a duty of the uh, uh, person to uh, finish his uh, work, whatever it may be. Similarly, one side you say, oh, you are privileged, you have all these things. The other side of the coin of privilege is, I have a rina pragna, I have gratitude for receiving uh, something. 
when you say privilege we all of us have privilege at different levels it's the question of how we perceive it some people are privileged that they have good eyesight they can hear very well they can they have a voice some people are don't uh, not able to hear not able to see some people don't have good health some people don't have uh, education so privilege can be seen at different levels when we read these volumes we find that irrespective of social background irrespective of education people of that era and many even today people are able to find enjoyment with whatever they have they are able to create situations where they make their lives meaningful so it is very easy to put the blame on somebody and say oh you are uh, privileged or you have this or i need the rights rather whatever we have within the framework we can change things to suit our needs we can learn to be contented we can learn to be happy this also serves as a great uh, guide for the uh, younger generation especially the millennials often i feel there uh, the people who are born after the uh, 1990s especially last 15 20 years they are exposed to so much of knowledge they have a lot of awareness of things around them they are very intelligent there's so many uh, good qualities that they have and it's very uh, noteworthy at the same time some of the traits which are commonly seen in the past this is my observation commonly seen in the past that is missing today one is uh, what you can call is the attitude the right attitude of you know openness and curiosity to know this seems to be missing the second thing is uh, fortitude uh, it's okay to fail it's okay if uh, something went wrong we'll give it another shot and the third thing is gratitude uh, where unless we recognize that where whatever we are doing what where, where we are is a result of the work of our ancestors of our teachers our friends so many other people are responsible for uh, us to be in this particular situation and if one goes through these volumes these uh, uh, qualities these values will get inculcated i feel it will create that uh, samskara because when you look at the life of some of these uh, people it is so difficult you now whether it is a uh, bhagavata sheshacharya or shiva piche mudaliyar all these people they are very very little but not once did any of these people with all these difficulties and struggle and thing they never thought of committing suicide they never thought of uh, you know uh, troubling other people because they were troubled whereas we find even today like some of the thing uh, somebody failed a exam so they jump from a building some top uh, uh, top rung uh, chef is uh, traveling around the world and we uh, commit suicide they have everything but uh, they don't realize the value of it and they want to discard it and again and again i feel when we see these uh, episodes the best things in life are either free or inexpensive you don't have to spend too much of time uh, too much of money we need to spend time we need to have the uh, um, uh, the mind space in order to enjoy the best things we have the opportunity even today i feel uh, whether it is uh, uh, whatever age group whatever social or economic background we may be it is always possible instead of going to a mall you can go to a nice museum you can go to a library you can go to a devalaya you can spend there it's uh, it's an experience that sometimes i feel because uh, the uh, previous generation has not cultivated the the possible enjoyment itself they don't know so many times i have uh, when if we just go to some uh, old temple in the na- neighborhood and just sit there in the evening just spend half an hour it, it it creates a totally different ambience and we used to do that when we were young my grandfather used to take me to krishna temple in maleshwaram every evening it was uh, almost like a daily ritual in the evening he will meet all his friends and i would go there but over the period of time in the evening you say oh uh, you uh, the, you should uh, sit and uh, study for your exams and uh, starting from the first standard you have exams so the whole opportunity for the uh, you know spending the time in a way which is uh, in, which is a, which is leisure on one hand at the same time also cultivating certain values and samskara on the other hand so i think it is always possible even today there are some very good music concerts dance programs there are plays which are held even today there are so many uh, possibility for us to spend the time so it's it's only uh, up to us uh, how we want to create uh, uh, you know our uh, 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 present and our future 
because it's i think it's very easy to blame somebody else this has uh, probably i think uh, on, on many times i feel the sort of damage that has happened in our society after 1947 is much more than what has happened uh, during the, uh, the, the hundreds of years of islamic invasion the uh, the uh, um, um, se- several years of damage by the british whatever problems and difficulties that they had i think much more was done post 1947 by our politicians and uh, the um, other uh, factors at play because you look at the so- sort of social life and uh, peace between different communities different religions in these episodes and what we see today there is a contrast there is a difference and what is the uh, what has uh, changed in the last uh, 50 or 100 years is the caste based politics or the uh, language uh, based politics which has arisen and unless people of this generation unless people who have exposed to the noble ideas uh, of the past uh, uh, of uh, people like uh, uh, db gundappa unless we take a step forward and try to make the change try to uh, go one step in the direction of uh, something which uh, takes us to a more elevated state i think it'll it, it, it'll be a Uh, a rather uh, sad time in the future if we don't uh, learn from the past and it is possible all it takes is uh, spending uh, uh, a couple of weekends that's all it will take if you are a avid reader in kannada or english all you need is uh, maybe 3 or 4 weekends you can take and read one of these volumes even if you read any one of these volumes i think it will be very en- en- enriching uh, hopefully at a later date i'll get the chance to discuss uh, the third fourth and other volumes and uh, i hope it has given you uh, some sort of uh, an insight into the mind of uh, dv gundappa as well as a small vision of the time uh, during the 19th 20th century of old mysore and i really hope that it inspires you to go and read the volumes uh, thank you so much for a uh, patient listening you have come uh, despite the rain and uh, all the other uh, hassles in bangalore i'm greatly uh, thankful to all of you namaskar